Welcome back everybody, Jake from Ohio State. Today we're going to check out a very, very cool knife, uh, the Spyderco PM2 Tonto. And I will get, will address the elephant in the room if you've watched my other videos uh, or have talked to me on Instagram. I'm not a fan of a Tonto blade. But here's the thing, and I said this when this was launched um, to several people. This, if you're going to do it, this is the way to do a Tonto blade. I... I'll, I'll hit a couple of things here, but when they released this, I thought, man, that looks terrific. And, and I just, I was absolutely excited for it. So to be able to get one in hand, uh, is super cool. Um, so we get some specs out of the way and we'll talk about the fun stuff. Uh, this guy is a big knife. Well, not huge, eight and a quarter inches. Uh, that's right where I like it to be somewhere between seven and a half, eight and a half overall. That way I know I got a good grip, even down here, not using that front choil, you get a full hand grip and then you can use that front choil, spread your hands out. Again, you know, I got XL, the old Gorilla mitts, um, kind of grip up forward if I want to. Everything still fits in there nicely. Uh, it's pretty cool. So that's great. Uh, eight and a quarter, eight and a quarter overall, 4.2 ounces. Uh, that's one thing that I really, really love about this knife. They, You'll see a little later, uh, they did some great uh, weight relief inside of here and the scales are, are all cut out. So nice and lightweight for such a big knife um, but not so lightweight that i feel like i'm gonna break it material wise you have that great steel that i really love s30 uh, s30 s35 any of those i think are, are fantastic steels um it, it, everything you know holds an edge sharpens easily all that stuff that you look for out of it um, rust resist and all that stuff so it's it's a really good steel G10 on the handles. Now this is, I didn't find this exact color combo and I didn't ask, uh, you know, when I had gotten it, but they make so many different uh, versions of this. And I think they just came out with a Jade, but they also need G10. I know you can get micarta scales and upgrade and do all sorts of fun stuff to it. If you had noticed, you know, kind of when I flipped over, uh, this isn't the factory pocket clip either. You're all well aware of those Spyderco clips and what I think of them, you know, I try to immediately get an MXG clip on it uh, because I think it looks so much better. And getting a black one, this thing just, it's really, really cool. So uh, anyways, just kind of the specs out of the way for you. So let's let's talk about, you know, obviously one of the main attractions of this thing is that compression lock. Um, so so I did not, and I, I just did not give this thing the credit that it deserved. Um, I When I cut it open, I'm going to cut that video in here in a minute. I say it multiple times because it's it's super cool. And so let's go ahead and do that. We'll talk about the inside of this thing and then come back. All right, so let's check out the inside of this. You know, I'm, I'm actually quite impressed with this. I really wasn't giving this thing the credit that it was due when I just originally seen it. You know, I kind of just thought it was a different way to put a liner lock in here. But, you know, when we get inside of this thing, make sure the blade snapped in there. You can see a lot of really strong contact points and a really good reason why this is, I honestly might put this up against the triad lock system, you know, it's it's pretty slick. Um, so you can see, you know, that, yeah, it is like a liner lock and the fact that it's got um, just that little liner that slides down, you can see the detent ball that just like a standard liner, you know, fits inside of, fits inside of that detent and rides around on there. Um, so that's cool, but but um, the contact points this thing makes is pretty cool. The fact that you have this really massive um, stopping pin right there, and the blade hits up against the back of that. Then if you can see it or not, but this stop pin, the, the whole locking bar hits the stop pin, and of course fits inside of that groove in there. So really your your contact points you know you've got three major contact points where this whole thing just fits inside of there so you know again much like the the triad lock system where you have your main pivot that of course takes a little bit of abuse but then this thing really does take that inertia of any type of strike and just kind of disperse it back through the handles um so i i think that's really really cool i I really didn't give it, I had a, a regular um, just lock back torn apart because I thought inside of here, it was gonna have more of this just where it notched into it, uh, which, you know, of course has worked and worked for years and then the triad lock kind of upgrades that as well. But, 
you know, because this, the way that they did this notch out inside of here so that the lock bar really nests inside of that and sits inside of there, this is this pretty legit. I'm not gonna lie. I again, I did not give this as much credit uh, as what it deserved just when it came out. You know, I kind of just thought it was just a reverse way of doing a regular liner lock, but um, it's pretty cool. So uh, you know, it's, these are all pretty dry in here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on this and uh, get it back together, and we'll do some final thoughts and some comparisons on it. All right. All right, there you go. It is a really cool design. Um, so I won't keep going on that. You know, the only other thing is, is using it. I will say that, that using it, how you hold it does take a little bit to get used to. I'm not saying a big learning curve, but you know, we're, we're used to these standard uh, liner lock where it's kind of this whole knife is resting in your hand and you're just flicking this over. Uh, or of course a lock back where we hit it and we drop it on our finger, you know, and, and let the Ricasso hit it or whatever. But this is, it's a little different, you know, you kind of, you're almost just pinching it by your fingertips, um, you know, but the action is so smooth, you don't really have to do anything else. It's not that you have to, you know, whip it shut and worry about it falling out of your hand, you know, you can literally just tilt it enough and you can see it, it'll bounce shut. Uh, so there's one thing to take note. It took me a little bit. At first I was actually holding it, you know, making it so harder on myself where I was holding it like this and letting it drop, you know, almost like it was a lock back. Uh, but and that's fine too. I, I might still do that a little bit. Um, left-handed, left-handed is it is almost impossible, you know. And I am left-handed, but I always carry right. But you know, you got to really, and you can see it's my finger would get snipped if I really did that. It's it's a little different now. I think that you, if you were going to do it left-handed, you know, just let it drop, and it's kind of hard to do it. But you, yeah, boy, that's I don't know. I'm going to go with, it just doesn't work very well left-handed. You know, you can, you can do it where you're, you're basically pinching it, you know, and then you got to kind of re-grasp it and that's, that's a little bizarre. So I'm going to just say it's a right-handed lock, uh, even though you can go, you know, four-way reversible pocket clip. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, maybe if you get used to it, you can kind of figure out where to, where to put your hand and, you know, something like that where you're letting it drop and then shutting it, I suppose. But uh, regardless, so that's stuff about the lock. It's it's cool and uh, good work. A couple of highlights, you know. A, I, I touched on this before. I'm not a fan of Tonto, and I but I can have enough people to attest that when this was launched originally, I said that's it. That's the way you do a Tonto, and I think that there's you know three main reasons why this is the first and and probably only Tonto I've ever liked, uh, and that's because most of them have you know, a perfectly hard change from, from this, you know, the angle over is completely just, you know, harsh, right? Where the lines or this is, this is actually brought back a lot farther, but what they did, you know, with the grind lines is they sort of made this a bit more gradual. And then even this portion out here has just a minor belly to it, you know? Um, so that tied in with those different grinds that they've put on there, those compound grinds also kind of even gives you an optical illusion that this isn't such a harsh, harsh change from here to here. And then the top, this, this whole swedge up here and the standard spider code, uh, almost the leaf shape, all that tied in together to me just makes this look like a really cool Tonto. Um, so, so there again, just great. Couple other cool things to point out, and then we'll we'll be done with it. So so throw some comparisons up. If anything that I think they always do uh, right is they're jimping on there. And on this guy, you've actually got a couple other other rows down in there. So when you you know really bite down on that thing, not only do you get one, but yeah, you get three standard uh, mini tank tracks, and that's always really cool. Um, and then the next thing that I flip it over that, that again they always do right is that front finger choil. And I think that's, it's one of the best, you know, you get a nice road jimping and then that last little bit right there that really just, you know, it puts a ramp in there and locks in nicely, you know? Um, so that's really about it. Look, it's, it's a great knife. They, they put in uh, a lot of work into this locking system. The overall design is really cool. You know, even if you're not into Tontos, I think this one really, uh, you know, they did a great job. So, uh, you know, I'll stop blubbering about this guy. Let's get some comparisons. And uh, we're going about our day. So um, let's see the uh, the Rat One. That's got to be a good one, you know. A nice big lean knife. Yeah, there you go. You know, and that's where I would put this. I would put this after examining it more like that. I would put this in a worker knife. You know, I'm going to use it. It's going to be a, a heavy user. 
Um, it's not, you know, that it's heavy in weight, but just the way that it's built. Um, so what's another one of those? This is a BB Praxis. I do the same thing with this guy. I, I, it's a nice big knife. I'll line up those pivots. You can see, uh, yeah, it's a little longer out here for sure. Um, but overall, the nice uh, thin handle. And we'll take that guy away. Put up a Tenacious since it's popular enough as well. Tenacious. Line up those pivots. Obviously not as much handle, but um, because that front finger choil, you know, you actually get more cutting surface off of that. Um, so there you go. I think it looks pretty cool. It's a great knife. Um, you know, I'm done talking about it. You guys absolutely enjoy the video. Uh, enjoy your weekend. It's Friday for me. So, uh, you know, hopefully it's Friday when you're watching this. If not, I don't know. Just have a good day anyways, whatever day it is. All right, everybody. Take care.